the 2006 United Nations Secretary General's Global Study on Ending Violence Against Women from Words to Action defines violence against women and girls as violence that is directed against a woman because she is a woman or violence that affects women disproportionately. It includes acts that inflict physical, mental, or sexual harm or suffering, threats of such acts, coercion, and other deprivations of liberty. Sadly, there is an alarming increase in all forms of violence against women and girls in Nigeria, with disabled females twice as likely to experience violence. I was sexually harassed by my dad at the age of seven. So I told my mom about it, but she was confused, so she also asked my dad, so my dad denied it. My mom found out about it and um, she was shouting, my village people has killed me. So my dad was not like begging her that it won't repeat itself again. And my mom forgave him. So the arts continued, so I could not have the boldness to tell my mom again. When I was a little kid, I was being molested by my uncle when I was sent for a holiday in Kaaba and I couldn't stay anymore because he had a wife and I always say that, that I'm in my own space and so stuff like that. And, and I, one, the day I tried to tell her that her husband has been trying to sleep with me, that day she said I'm an agent of darkness. So I, apart from being uh, sexually uh, violated, I was also, that is domestical violence too. I went through it a lot. Girls are more likely to experience both sexual and physical violence than other combinations of violence, with one out of four having experienced sexual violence and one in five experiencing their first incidents of sexual violence before the age of 13. Since I was praying for church, and I hear no kanawato, and I say yes. So, Imana, Papa Robona says it's the one. So he now told me that I should, I should help him to buy a dress. He now hold my hand, he now put me on the chair, and I shouted, so he now covered my mouth. So he now tore my pants. He will tie a white towel. So he now, as he will finish, he now warned me that if I tell my mommy or my daddy or he hear it for anybody, he will come inside and kill me. As he come inside and break me, nobody knows. How he come inside and kill me, nobody will know. I now asked my baby to go and buy green for me when she was growing. She said that the man called him, called her, that a fine girl come. My daughter now said that she's 10 years old. She now said that no, her mommy sent her. And she said she, she, she should go in hurry and come back. She said she don't know when the man follow her back. Grab her hold, held her hand, held her nose, grab her into his room and rape her. A child of 10 years. In Nigeria, cultural and social norms that support violence against women and girls are common in many regions and are driven and sustained by negative perceptions, gender stereotypes, silence, shame, and stigmatization, which further places women and girls at the back burner of the society. In September, I can't remember the date actually, I was called by a strange number, introduced himself as a detective, and he traced me down to my office asked me to come outside. So I went outside, he asked me, he said, I, he was asked to pick me up and take me to the station. What purpose, he said, he cannot disclose until I get to SAS office at Guzapé. I was worried for myself too, because that's the first time in my entire life, I actually find myself in the police station and being asked to sleep in a cell for something I couldn't even put my head on, like what is my offense? which I wasn't told anything. I was treated like a common criminal. I was just a single mother who, out of a, break, a broken home, decided to move out of the environment for one, for my sanity, two, to try to make a living for myself, which the man involved in question was not happy about. 
because to him I would have been more of a puppet, still begging around. Breaking the silence on the issue of violence against women and girls, including rape and sexual exploitation, has encouraged more families to come forward and report cases of rape and other forms of violence. As long as the world sees women as unequal partners in its progress, you would find that issues that concern women will be pushed to the back burner. It's structural in the sense that this is something that permits the entire society. So whether it's at home, in school, at the workplace, even going to the market, you find that there are people who are keen to ensure that women are treated as second-class citizens. Indirectly, this impacts on the issues women are concerned about, like violence. So when violence happens to women, just because they are women, just because they feel that they need to be subdued, the root cause is actually the fact that gender inequality is something that is recognized and is encouraged in all facets of society. I want to believe that this structural inequality you're talking about will be that thing called patriarchy, on which a lot of people um, have rolled out different mischievous ideologies just to ensure that women continually, you know, are, you know, subjected to a wide range of very unfortunate things. Um, of course, inevitably, it affects very negatively. There's a lot of negative masculinity where a lot of people feel the need to hurt or harm other people in order to feel like they are truly dominating. And that would account for why when certain men lose their jobs, they fear, they fear that the women are going to do to them what they are used to doing, which is not giving a fair chance. And they start fighting her. Now, with all this in mind, um, it, it, it's, it's multifaceted, anyhow you look at it. The situation of low access to justice for victims, the lack of concerted state action in the area of law enforcement, reinforces an underlying culture of high tolerance for violence against women and children. <laughs> There are laws that have been put in place to address gender inequality and discrimination, starting with the Constitution. And we also now have the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, which thankfully is being rapidly domesticated in other parts of um, Nigeria. So what needs to happen now is to make the laws, the contents of the law, a reality, a lived reality for women. The first step is, of course, making sure everybody gets to have a copy of that law, um, using popular media, the radio, the TV, using opportunities in communities, community town halls, market days, in order to share this information about the rights and responsibilities of the state, but also of the community to protect the rights of women. And finally, the government needs to put resources aside. These laws, protocols, and what have you exist at different levels to address the West African region, Africa as a whole, uh, you know, the entire world, you know, with the UN conventions and treaties and the other protocols that exist. However, re relative to Nigeria, Nigeria is signatory to a lot of them, and Nigeria usually is signatory to these things and ratifies without reservations. But in implementation, that's where the problems come, right? Um, we've had issues around harmful traditional practices, where, of course, women are expected to start counting in the room after the last man is tired of counting in the room. And that's very wrong. It um, violates the basic human um, rights of women. This man, this man that raped my daughter now, if you leave this man now, definitely is not punished. He will still go and do it in another place and nobody is safe. Government should just do something so that all those rapists should be punished. Giving strict punishments to those who are, 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 are sexually molesting young girls at day or little children, you know, um, severe punishment should be carried, the justice should be done towards that. And I think government should also put more effort in the that our young girls are, are safe. So I think the government should put down a writ that this evil act should stop. And secondly, there are laws that review the punishments given to offenders, but due to the bribing and corruption, 
the government are not following the laws again. Many of the people that should be the enforcers of this law are also still living in the same cultural society and have these biases that gives them the impression that these laws are just meant for you know the lawmakers. And so we need to push, we need to that's that's the bias that we need to break. It is important to note that everyone in society has an important role to play in ending violence against women and girls. We all must work together across sectors to address the various aspects of violence. Governments and CSOs likewise must do more to ensure that the barriers to access justice for victims of gender-based violence are removed. I don't have any other place to go to. I don't have where to sleep. So I had to stay and was being everything each night. He tries to touch me. So there was a certain night that he, he said that this night, if I don't have sex with him, that I will leave this house. I will leave his house. So I was dragging with him when uh, he now hit me and I fell and I ran out of the house. The whole experience made me traumatized. I actually fell into depression. I hated myself. I hated everything. I lost my job because I couldn't concentrate. I was at work, but I keep remembering the rats that were eating my legs that night. Like I was traumatized academically. I was going down. And uh, it was like a wound inside my heart that could not be healed. Like I looked down on myself. I cannot talk again. Like, like I was just dumb. And now I felt bad at it look at me at the age of 12, carrying baby everywhere. The UN Women theme for this year is Unite. The major agenda is to facilitate 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. So the 25th of November kickstarts the 16 days of activism and it's a very notable date because that's also the date where we recognize the uh, day set aside to eliminate gender-based violence. It's interesting that the team for this year is looking at um, structural inequalities because that is the foundation of the gender-based violence that exists in our world today. As we commence the 16 days of um, activism uh, for the elimination of violence against women and girls, I think um, it is important for all stakeholders and particularly activists to come together and um, propose, plan, list of focused actions that will achieve the results that we desire and in this regard we're talking about um, specific case litigations or public interest litigations, legislative advocacies that would see to a harmonization of the laws that will help achieve the result that we desire. At Sterling Law Center for instance we have um, in the past instituted public interest litigations, led legal teams that eventually got judgments in key decisions that eventually have influenced the way uh, women and girls are treated. I want to speak particularly about the recent decision of the Federal High Court uh, in the cases uh, that are now popularly referred to as Abuja Raids cases, uh, which involved the hounding and arrest of women by the Abuja Environmental Protection Board and other law enforcement agencies within the FCT in Nigeria. The landmark cases eventually uh, conclusively decided that it was not within the purview of the Abuja Environmental Protection Board to, uh, in a discriminatory fashion, arrest and um, abuse women. And this has led to a drastic reduction in those kind of raids that we used to experience before. In our private and public spaces, let us all unite to fight against all forms of gender-based violence.